archaeology. As a mummy, I owe it everything. You can only make the most amazing finds if you're a fearless archaeologist. And there's one archaeologist out of all of them who's the best of the best. I'm talking about my best friend, Tad Jones. Well, okay, so he's the only one I know. But he's brave. He's tough. A hero who... Whoa! Well, who we all love just the way he is. With all his craziness and impossible treasures. Oh. Hmm.
he didn't find the treasure he was hoping for, he got a nice, I'd almost say precious souvenir that will give us a lot to work with. Tad was so absorbed in that rubber chicken that he didn't notice that the beautiful Olmec temple was still crashing down on top of him. And that's when you realize that you should have paid attention in phys ed as well as in archaeology. Luckily, Sarah, Tad's girlfriend loves him despite his unfortunate knack for finding rubber chickens inside Olmec ruins.
Uh-huh.
ơi
Papa. Uh-huh. Oops. 
That's how Tad discovered how to reach the center of the pyramid and unlock the secret of the Omex, if he survived the collapse. But don't worry, when the going gets tough, an archaeologist like Tad Jones has the determination, the agility, and the strength of his girlfriend Sarah. Always ready to face the dangers hidden in the heart of any pyramid.
When Sarah found Tad, he was chasing his dog, Jeff, who was carrying a mysterious medallion in his teeth. Tad had tried to pass on his love for relics from the past to his dog. But Jeff was into chewology, not archaeology. So, he ate the only relic that Tad had ever found. And then he did what dogs usually do. He ran away. 
<laughs> now Tad has to catch him. Oh. <laughs> Archaeology. I'm not the one doing the searching. I'm the one who's being searched for. But even I could see that an Egyptian sarcophagus in an Olmec temple? No way! How is it possible that these two civilizations crossed paths, wondered Sarah and Tad? When the question should have been, how is it possible that Olmec roofs collapse so easily? As the passage closed behind them, a hand opened right in front of them. Brian, Anne, and Ryu had decided that Tad's work experience in Veracruz was over. For good. The good news is that Jeff finally threw up the medallion on the trip to Chicago. The bad news was that he had to pick it up with his hands. Ugh. But what really matters is that the story gets exponentially better from here on out. I finally appear. I wanted to show Tad everything I had bought with his Jamazon card, but I didn't get a chance, because no sooner had he walked through the door than the phone rang. The caller was Victoria Moon, the eccentric psychic who believed in talking mummies and all that nonsense. She had a message. Jeff's medallion was the key to unlocking the Egyptian sarcophagus that Tad found in Veracruz. The three archaeologists had hijacked the discovery of the sarcophagus and were going to exhibit it at the University of Chicago. Tad had a golden opportunity to use the medallion to prove who really made the find. All he had to do was sneak onto the campus with the medallion, even if it meant carrying Jeff in his arms, because he had <laughs> swallowed it again. Whoa.
Want to be deterred, Tad snuck into the University of Chicago's library. What he didn't expect was something as cool and magnificent as... Me! Ta-da! Well, and Jeff and Belzona, who are also cool in their own way. Tad was super happy to see us, as always. Although, he did say a few harsh things to try and get us to go home, but... I used my snake charmer look and somehow it must have worked. Because he gave us a Charmazon card with the sole mission that we should get lost and leave him alone. Which we promptly did, of course.
Oh oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh.
Hey! Uh oh. Uh-huh. Hmm. 
Uh-huh.
Like Victoria Moon said, the medallion fit. It was the master key that unlocked the Egyptian sarcophagus. And when it opened up, it smelled a little bit like my dirty socks. The room was flooded with a strange green light and mysterious bolts of lightning slammed into Belzoni Jeff and me. We were being transformed by an ancient curse. It melted Jeff and Belzoni into a single creature. As for me, where was my beautiful face? Whose idea was it to turn me into a... And even though our intention was to explain ourselves, we decided to stick to our plan. To go to Paris and find the map. The thing is, now we have to do it by fleeing the scene. Victoria covered everyone's travel expenses. She seemed very keen to get her hands on the Emerald Tablet. Even more than I was, since I had turned back into an animal. So my friends had to disguise me as their pet and put me in the hold of the plane. She also got the lorry that we drove to the Louvre. At that point, I should have begun to suspect her intentions. But I was so worried about my physical form, I didn't think twice about it. We decided to split up once we got to the Louvre. Tad went straight to check out the Department of Egyptian Antiquities, while I wanted to make a few improvements to certain works of art.
Whoop! 
Hoppa. Hmm. found Dr. Dominic's office, my brave, fearless, and courageous friend didn't hesitate to, oh. to scare himself to death again. And I'm not surprised. It's not easy to come face to face with a living mummy who doesn't have my charm. She introduced herself as Ra Amon A, Ramona to her friends. After the shock, Ramona told us that there was no map. She was the one who knew how to find the Emerald Tablet. She would take us only if we made her famous. It wasn't easy, since Tad couldn't even make himself famous. But we agreed. The conversation was interrupted right at that moment. Pickle and Ramirez showed up again and we were forced to make an escape. Problem! Ramona wanted to take her bathtub. Solution? It was the bathtub that took us. Straight to the same. Oh! <laughs> 
managed to walk away in one piece and squeaky clean from our bathtub chase. The same can't be said of the bathtub. But the worst thing is that the curse was getting worse. I was transforming more and more frequently. Ramona explained to us that I would become a mythological beast more and more often until it was permanent if we didn't lift the curse. The only way to stop it was to travel to Egypt and open the Great Pyramid, where the Emerald Tablet was kept. But to get inside, Ramona would have to complete the ritual that would crown her pharaoh, which she never managed to finish, because her cousin killed her three days after she took the throne. So far, so good. If it wasn't for the fact that we were in a sewer in Paris and we had to somehow get to Egypt, which seemed impossible. It was one thing to get a mummy on a plane, another to get an Amit that weighs several tons on one. Until our friend discovered that we had a rubber chicken. And that gave her an idea, because it turns out that I, like Amit, can fly. And I love toys. Who knew we'd find a way to get there that was even stranger than a bathtub? And that it could be controlled by squeaking. The trouble started the second we got close to Egypt. Trouble? Catastrophes! The evil emerald tablet was so powerful that it took over the mind of the one who most wanted it, Victoria Moon. And not only that, her power was so great, she opened a wormhole in the Great Pyramid. She sucked us all in to try and make us her slaves. Well, not all of us. Ramona was driven back by some sort of magical force that wouldn't let her in with us. And when the magic hole closed, she became our only hope of ever seeing the light of day again. Ah. Hmm. Wow. 
I can barely remember this part. All I know is that when Tad and Ramona and Sarah met again in the heart of the pyramid, I was by then a gigantic mythological monster who could think of nothing. have got the idea a little bit. And there I was. Something came over me that made me protect the vortex and hurl myself against my friends. Only Sarah and Ramona were left. They had to work together to defeat me and save Tad.
Victoria Moon was...